So what is raycasting and how does it work? Well, raycasting means sending out an invisible ray from a given position in a specified direction, and it moves a point along its path to determine if anything is in its way. And sphere and block cast were the same, but instead of a point, they use a 3D shape. And what I'm showing right now is a visualizer by Tom, so add the credit goes to him, but I will be talking more about it later in the video. And right now, let me cover the programming part. So raycasts operate in something called a word root, meaning basically this. So it's workspace or a word module. And I have everything just prepared prepared right here in this tool, so I'm gonna go over it really quickly. I have all the variables like humanoid root part, the tool, the player's mouse, and the range. So I'm gonna start off with the ray function. So I have the origin and the direction, which is returned from this function right here. Origin is the humanoid root part's position, destination is the mouse position, and the direction is calculated like any other, so it's destination point minus origin point. And if you want to limit it, you basically just do the same, but you use the unit and do times range, and right now the range is set to 20. Then you have the result right which we get from the raycast method and casting a ray takes three parameters the origin and the direction which both are vector free and the optional raycast params object which is used for filtering and the filtering is done like so i have this function right here which returns the created raycast params but firstly it creates the params from the constructor and mine is set to exclude so you can either set it to a blacklist or a whitelist but right now this is just getting the instances from the player's character and then it puts it in the blacklist, same with the tool handle, and then this is how we assign it. Now if you want to use the params, you basically have to paste them into the raycast method, then if you don't get the result, meaning if the raycast doesn't detect anything, then we just create the part at the result that position. And also these are the properties that the raycast result returns, but for this tutorial I'm just gonna use the position, so I'm gonna demonstrate it now. So we have this tool, and if you use it, it's actually spawning points at the position. And if I try to press any further back, it doesn't because it's limited to a certain distance. So that's how it's working. And also if I try to press on the back of this part, it's gonna create parts only in front. And if you want a different visualizer than the one I shown previously, I've also made a function right here that creates a part for 0.1 seconds. And this function takes the origin point and the result position. And based off of this, it calculates the part C frame like so. So I'm gonna just put it right here. And this is only to show you how the ray looks. So now if I press it, it's gonna fire like a laser. And it's firing it from our humanoid's root part. And also as you can see the ray detects the terrain. But let's move to the sphere cast now. And it's basically the same except it also takes a radius parameter. For which I just take the tool handle size n divided by 2. And this was supposed to be tool handle that size x. Anyway. And the ray cast itself is pretty thin right. And you don't have any control of making it larger. But sphere cast same with the part size. They both actually allow you to have the ray cast effect in a bigger area. And basically they have their own individual use cases for different stuff. And I would say that ray casts are good for like a normal gun for making something that requires more precision like aiming but sphere cast could be used to make let's say like beam cannons anything that has a wider area of range because sphere and block cast they both allow you to just control the to control the size of the affected area that's moved along the beam so yeah, but moving on to the block cast now. Now the block casts are something different. The block cast origin operates on the C frame, and because of that I would have to calculate the direction differently, and I just take it from the mouse's look vector. This is just another way of limiting the ray cast. And also the sphere and block cast, unlike the normal ray, they both return the first collision point with the object, so the corner of the block is gonna return a different position than the exact mouse position if it hits anything, so yeah, you have to just be mindful of that. But yeah, that's basically all the casts for now. And I will also be leaving this place on copy locked in the description so you can download it and test it with the code yourself. But yeah, about this visualizer place, like I said, this is Tom's work and I'm gonna leave the link to his dev forum post in the description. But this should just give you an idea of how the ray casts actually work. And this is just very helpful to understand how the rays operate. Not to mention that it's very useful to see if you are actually casting the ray in the correct direction. And overall, I recommend to use it because it might also help you with different stuff. But that's everything if it comes to the raycasting and its basic use cases and yeah. I hope you found this tutorial informative and if you like it then leave a like. Also join my Roblox group. But yeah that's everything for today. Hope you had a nice day and see ya guys.